how are you? I'm fine. I'm very good. Thank you. That's very good to hear. Now, yeah. before we get into the Le Leviathan uh, album, the third part, I would like to jump back to the beginning. Now, do sure. you remember the first song or maybe artist that you were ob obsessed with as a as a young man? Totally, totally. It started in, I, I don't remember exact the year, but I was not old. Uh, it must have been around 76. And I opened, my friend had a magazine. I saw Kiss in there. Mm. Point of no return. That's what I want to do. You know, so that, that was my first, absolutely first contact with where the word heavy metal didn't exist back then. It was hard rock, you know. Mm. And uh, I was like, that's what I'm going to do. And I was a drummer back then. So I wanted to be okay. Peter Chris, <laughs> you know. So, yeah. And then I heard the band after that. My friend had a, had the uh, the first live album. I was totally blown away by it. And I, I that was the only thing I wanted for Christmas. You don't have to buy anything else for me. Just that, you know. And I got it. And I thought I wanted to rebel against my parents who were into opera and stuff like that. But they thought it was cool as well. So it was a total mistake. <laughs> but it's, it's very interesting because I've been doing this job for... 10 plus years now and one of the most uh named artists that that impacted especially heavy music is kiss yeah. so, yeah. so what what is it about them is it was it the aesthetics like you say because you saw them before you heard them what is it about kiss that makes them so influential i think i think that first of all to 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 a kid that are into serial magazine and stuff and then you open up and see that that comic figures really exist you know superheroes because they are like that when you are that young you know mm. and so so they were my idols before i heard them you know and then upon uh, uh, above that it's the music that is very accessible i think it's that that combination that combination commercially is per perfect you know and that's what other bands are doing today you know look at ghost for example which i like very much they are also doing that. It's a combination between between music that are very accessible, even outside the, the, the metal community and rock community, and with a strong gimmick, you know. Yeah, and I That's think it. Kiss also was very good in marketing themselves and, and making sure that they were seen everywhere. Totally, totally. No shame at all. <laughs> <laughs> no, but... It's it's interesting then because well you're a young uh, boy seeing this thinking okay I'm sold this is what I would like to do yeah. I don't I, I don't exactly know what it is uh, that that they're doing but that's what I want to do now then yeah, I yeah, come yeah. to then you come to the point well it's one thing to want to be able to sing or anything but then you have, need to have the voice as well so exactly. for you when did you discover that you could sing. I think I discovered that I, I had something pretty early, but I was actually too shy to take the microphone and sing. Okay. I was playing drums and I was playing the bass, you know, and um, I was in the school choir, though. But that was basically because I, I if you were in the choir, you were allowed to, to walk away from the math lessons, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I, I, I remember the first time I got a question to sing in a band. Or no, it was not a question. It was a demand for me. I was. It was pretty late. I was fifteen, okay. and there were a band called The Darkness actually in Stockholm, local band. They were pretty big in my neighborhood, <laughs> and I was talking to one of the guys, you know, and ah, we looking for a singer. I'm I'm a singer. I said I wasn't. <laughs> I'm a singer. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I was like five years younger than they. Uh, and that's a big difference in that age. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Try me at least. Okay. Come to our rehearsal next Saturday, one o'clock, and we try. And I don't know how, but I got the job. <laughs> <laughs> and we made demos, you know, in a portable studio back then, and um, with four channels. And we recorded, we recorded live wire with Motley Crue and a, a song called. Power of the sword that we wrote ourselves. Mm. I, 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 <laughs> I take back everything I said bad about Motley Crue when I hear that. <laughs> <laughs> but it was the seed to something, you know. It was the seed to something. Yeah.
if if you obviously it's it's a long time ago, but if you compare your voice uh, then to now, how 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 would you, how would you see how would you describe it's the difference? Night and day, night and day. But I still I still even if it sounded horrible, I felt inside mm -hmm. that I this is something that can be good in one year or ten years. I don't know when, but I I feel that I can develop this. You know. And I think I did a little. <laughs> <laughs> well, you certainly have. Um, was there was there a turning point for you then, uh, where you thought, okay, this is actually sounding good, and I'm I'm on the right track? When did that come? Yeah, we um, yeah, we um, I remember we did this band for a while. We were kind of this big hair band, you know, with <laughs> more makeup than your mom and, and everything, you know, and. Um, we were invited to participate in a, in a rock band competition. And uh, we got to record a demo tape for free, you know. Mm. And the deal was we should record one of our own songs and every band that participated had a cover song that they had to do to their own. And it was this song um, uh, with Beatles. Ah, oh, come on. Twist and Shout. Mm. That you had to make your own, you know. And we recorded that in the studio, and the studio guy was a pretty famous guy. And he said some very nice words to me. And then I understood that maybe I'm not that bad, you know. And later on, he called me, do you want to come over and do a work for me, a demo work for another band, you know. So I think at that point somewhere, I, 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 I felt like, okay, now I can call myself a singer without being ashamed of it, you know. Right. And I was probably 16 or something like that. It was pre it's pretty late to start with singing. Okay. Okay, I have my background with my father who is a singer, so I I I got something in my in my blood from there. But but um I never really practiced, you know, until then. Mm. What was it about um alternative music or or heavy music that that uh, appealed to you? Because I I think especially um you mentioned growing up in the 70s so you've you've seen all the decades and all the all the changes yeah. that hard music went through what was for you initially the appeal and how how does it stay so appealing to you i don't know uh, that's a good question because i like other kind of music too sure but, but but this is sort of like my my the foundation that i have inside you know and together with the classical music that i have at home uh but um I think I think the classical music. If if Beethoven would have lived today, he would definitely have wrote, wrote some cool heavy metal tunes. <laughs> I, I think so, really, because it's not so far away from each other. It's just a little bit more re rebellious about this heavy heavy music, you know. And like I said to you before, heavy metal. You you didn't use that term until maybe beginning of the eighties or mid eighties. I don't really remember. But I remember when I heard Judas Priest Painkiller. That was about the hardest I've ever heard in my life back then, you know. And that that for me is heavy metal, you know, which I which I love. But nowadays we have we have uh, all kinds of metal, and and it's it's yeah, gotten yeah. more technical. It's gotten more more dark. Everything. So it's yeah, it's funny. And everything has a name, you know. It's gothic metal, it's death metal, it's black metal. It's a. I I I prefer to look at it as a big metal leather dressed family, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I have one more question, kind of about this early era, because uh, not too long ago I spoke to a certain number of uh, kind of hard rock bands uh, from Seattle in the U U.S. And they all told me that everything was going fine, uh, fine, and then grunge and Nirvana came out, and, and then everything went downhill. How did you experience? Is is that fair to exactly say? Exactly the same feeling. Okay. Exactly the same feeling. Because it was like all the glamour was gone, you know, mm. all the all the excess, all the uh, the rock star thing was gone. You should you should preferly go on stage like this without this, you know, because it's mm. glitter. And, you, you know, for me, I, I can respect some of the grunge songs now, but it's not really my thing, you know. 
to go up on a stage and uh, looks like you come from from the pharmacy and go up and look at your shoes and play. You know, that's that's not what it's about for me. Well, it makes sense, especially if Kiss was kind of that first influence, that, yeah, that exactly. kind of spectacular. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. No, that makes sense. But it's always coming something that that goes against. I remember, I remember actually when Sex Pistols came. It was kind of like the same, same reaction against this glitter thing that was. First, it was Kiss, Sweet, and Alice Cooper, and then one day Sex Pistols came. Boom, you know. You should put needles in your mm. in your cheek and have have ripped clothes. And Ramones came, so it's always coming something like that that goes against what's in and give birth to another fashion, so to speak. But it, it's interesting because we we can look at the, the music in that sense as, as well. I saw a really nice documentary years ago, but it talked about kind of what you mentioned now that. Uh, if if you look at kind of the evolution of rock music, and then yeah. at, at some point you got Pink Floyd and all, all those progressive rock bands, and it was really uh, intricate and 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 strange. And then kind of the reaction was, as you mentioned, the punk rock, where it's just three power yeah. chords and it's just uh, it's yeah. ease of use in a way. So totally, so, totally. So, so for for you uh, as as you developed your your own craft where, where did you because now uh, obviously with uh, Therion, it's it's very uh, it's close to classical it's it, it is intricate uh, how do yeah. you see how do you see your path ending up in Therion uh, for yourself well it ended up with the phone call actually because like we said i i released a solo album very melodic pop rock album in in exactly before nirvana made it big you know, mm. so that album just dipped. You know, it it, it sold good. For, if it, if I had those numbers today, it would be great. But back then, this was before streaming. You know, sure. And um, uh, one day I had a phone. This was two thousand and six or two two thousand seven, I think. I got a phone call to my home and it was hi. My name is Christopher Johnson, and I play in a band called Therion. I heard about them, but I never listened listened to them. I didn't know really what it was. Oh, hi. Yeah, it's our singer, Mats Levin. Do you know him? Yeah, it's a good friend of mine. Now. He's quitting the band. And we are going on a world tour. Do you want to come? <laughs> uh, well, I need to hear you first, you know. So I know that I can do it. And it's sort of in, within my style. So the next... The day after the the phone call, I got the whole catalog in the post office that I that I went to take out, and I put on the CD, which was Gothic Kabbalah, that CD. Mm. And I heard the first song, and I didn't listen many minutes until I grabbed the phone and called him. I'm in, you know. <laughs> but that's how it was. And then, and when is my first gig then? Yeah, it's it's at Wacken. Oh my god. <laughs> And first of all, it's Wacken. It's not a. It's not an easy. It's not a easy warm up game for me. And sure. and then you you stepping in somebody else's shoes, which is very sensitive to fans, you know. So it uh, <laughs> it was it was a it was a nervous experience, nerve wracking experience, but it was fun. Yeah, but then, um, and also, you have to learn all the songs of the set list, yeah. and, and that's 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 uh, quite a challenge as well. I yeah, suppose. I was gonna I was gonna come to that because. Three days before the gig, before we went away to Germany, Christopher called me and I forgot to say a song that we would play. Mm. Oh my God, so I have to learn that as well. And you know, these lyrics we have in theory are not the easiest all the way, all the sure. time. Definitely. So um, I probably slipped on some words. <laughs> 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 but how did you feel then after that well, Wacken show well, when you came off stage what was the feeling oh that was great that was an adrenaline kick you know when the adrenaline goes out and you're like ah oh, give me a beer you know <laughs> <laughs> now, that was great I feel after this I've, I've been in theory now for I think 16 years almost right and I feel really home you know because it's it's the best of both worlds for me both the classical parts and and composing wise it's you're very free there are actually no rules you know and i like that 
that that's a good bridge, I think, to the Leviathan uh, trilogy. Because uh, am I right in saying that this this third uh, part of the the th trilogy is is the more experimental part? Is 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 that fair to say? I would absolutely say that. I couldn't have said it better, because it started like we were going to do a new album. Started to write for a new album, me and Christopher, and COVID came. Everything locked down. I don't know how it was in. You're from Holland, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know how it was here, but I'm in Spain, and it was a total lockdown. You could yes. go to the store one time a day, if and alone. Then it was just staying home, ordering food from Burger King, and writing songs. <laughs> so we said, uh, let's write in distance, you know, and 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 send files forward and back. So we started. And basically, we worked nine to five, and we didn't know how long this pandemic would go on. So we ended up having like, I don't know how many, but a pile of songs, you know, and in different styles. Because I was asking Christopher, what kind of direction do you want to go? You know, oh, it should be good, you say. Yeah. Oh, clear, very clear. <laughs> okay. So with that instructions, you, do, um, you, you get very different styles. So we said to, or Christopher told me that we have so many songs now that are good. So let's not make one album. Let's let's make three. All right. So then we sorted them. Like the first one was the commercial one in theory and sense, and the second one a little darker, I would say, and exactly like you said, the third one is more experimental. We let go of the fence and just go bananas. You know, no rules. That's great uh, to hear. And the, f the first thing that really stuck out to me was uh, Duende, because I'm a big Paco de Lucia fan, the uh, oh. flamenco guitarist. Uh, yeah. And it kind of uh, has that vibe to it. So so can yeah, you tell yeah, me about yeah. that song? Absolutely. I remember that very clearly. That's that's my song. Okay. And, um, and uh, I wrote that song. I was sitting here. We were in this, in this uh, writing process. And I had the studio door open and my girlfriend had the TV on much too loud, you know, and it was a, a documentary about flamenco. And I was just going to scream to her, can you please turn it down a little bit, you know? But then I started to listen and I wonder if I can write something like that and infuse it with, with metal, you know, I don't know. So I wrote that song. It was pretty fast written, you know, okay. and I wrote also with for this typical Spanish brass Da, 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 da. Mm -hmm. And um, when it was done, I I sent it to Christopher. I think maybe he wouldn't will not like this, you know. But, and he called me. Ah, I really like this song. Let's do it. Nobody else did that. Do this stuff, you know. So let's do it. And yeah, who who plays the guitar on that? Because it is a certain technique that you play with, and it is, it sounds very authentic. So so. Yeah. Uh, and we have the advantage. We have the advantage of having a Argentinian guitar player. Ah, so okay. it's him. it's him, and um, that's that's actually his part. He wrote that totally. I, I have nothing to do with that part. I wrote a little guitar part in the beginning with with synthesizer guitars just to put the idea across. You know, but he's and doing that great. When do the lyrics come in uh, for the band? And is that something first the music and then the lyrics come in? Or how does that work? Yeah. In our cases, in theory and cases, it's like that. Because we have an outside lyricist. Sure. His name is Per Albinson. He's extremely talented. And it works like this, that we make a song, a demo, with the melody and everything, when, where the lyrics can be whatever, blah, blah. Can be about fl flower picking, you know. And sure. then I send send it to him, and say that this, I want this to be about this and that. Or we say free hands, you know. Mm. And a couple of hours later, you have you have it back in the mail. You know, fantastic lyrics, you know. And Duende is a, it's an Iberian mythological creature, so to speak. So yeah, you're very very happy with it. Did did, did you? Obviously, the band has written about myth mythological figures and all that kind of stuff. But w w when you write, for instance, the, the music to Duende, do you kind of, in the back of your mind, kind of know what you want the song to be about? 
Sort of. I was I was discussing with with my girlfriend about do you have any mythological creatures you know like we have in in Sweden you know like Thor and Odin or 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 right. Yeah, we have one called Duende. So the, the idea comes from her. Okay. Actually, and she wrote she actually wrote the l- lyrics that she's singing in the beginning, the Spanish words. That's hers, and um, so we we told Per to Duende is a very cool little little critter you know <laughs> what what so, i find yeah. interest oh sorry go ahead yeah that, so so but um, this specific song was was obvious that it needed some 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 connection with the spanish since the music is what it is you know? right but the, for you as the, as a, a vocalist and receiving lyrics from somebody else uh, it, because whenever I talk with artists about uh, lyric writing, there there's also a, an element of uh, phonetically making it sound right. So sometimes it's not always the word, but no, that's that's true, that's true. And it it happens that sometimes I have to say to Perry, this is not a good good uh, vowel to to do a falsetto mm. in, you know, O for example. So can can you write something else here? And he fixed that, no problem. You know? Yeah. No, okay. Well, sometimes I fix it myself and put put another word there that fits. Yeah, and obviously you've been uh, working together for quite a uh, a long time now, so it, the the connection must be very uh, like a well oiled oiled machine, I think. It is, especially after this Leviathan trilogy trilogy. Me and Christopher especially developed a fantastic partnership when it comes to songwriting, working together, and we are we are really very different person persons you know uh, he's a very pragmatic person you know very very serious uh, he can be fun sometimes but i'm more like blah, blah blah i don't have this in order you know and that's joke more of a joker but i think that you feed from each other you know i i need some of his discipline and he needs some of my more light sides you know so and work wise we are both i mean workaholics so where does that um, drive come from? It's because it's fun. It's lustful. Mm. That, that's where it comes from. You know, I um, I love to come up in the morning, take my morning coffee, and go into the studio and feel the, the smell of the the, the, the wood, and mm. sit down and I I don't sit and wait for inspiration. I sit down and play, and sometimes hopefully something good comes out. What do you play on uh, when you write? Do you write on piano, guitar, uh, the drums? Even? Mostly piano, mostly piano. But I write some stuff on guitar actually. But m- mostly it, it's a it's a keyboard idea. Since I'm a better piano player than guitar player, I actually suck on guitar. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm, I'm, I'm very good to... after a couple of beers and, and a bonfire, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm trying to learn both at at the moment. Yeah, yeah. But we'll see which one gets better. Um, yeah, I have actually. I got to show you because uh, our guitar player are endorsed by uh, by a guitar company, and he gave me a guitar that is probably the most ugly guitar ever made. I show you. <laughs> what I do. If I make a demo, I do it on this one. Oh wow! <laughs> <laughs> I bet it sounds. Good. It sounds good, but it's yeah. It's I was gonna say very. <laughs> I don't know what they were thinking, you know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The, the the other song I wanted to tackle a little bit is uh, Malefic- Maleficium. Maleficium. Yeah, Maleficium. Yes. Uh, because yeah. obviously, vocally, that's a very interesting song, the way you uh, you sing that duet, in, in a sense. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what it, is it, the... It... Well, you mentioned the chemistry, but what is the chemistry with Lisa like then to to figure out how to use your voices together? Well, that that's a production. Qu- I mean, first, I it it has happened that I have written a song, for example, and I have been thinking that this is a, this is female part, but then Christopher get no this this should be this should be a bass, bass singer, huh? Okay. So it's a it's a, it's a throwing ideas to each other, you know. Because if I send you a song, you might not see it in the same way that I see it, you know. So, but the Ma- Maleficium example you say that that's funny because that was the song that I 
didn't think was so good in the beginning. Mm -hmm. And now it turned out to be my favorite song. Okay. What changed? Yeah. I the, the, when it was done and I heard when I and I I got it, you know, that this is very cool. I have one last question then because I saw uh well this this part is coming out. How does it feel now to kind of bookend or to to finalize this part of the band? You, you've done three albums, Leviathan, this chapter is now closed. Well, what are, are the feelings within the band now moving forward? Great. I mean, I I'm I am personally very happy and proud of what we have accomplished with this trilogy, especially the, the, the latest one. And um, it's not really close yet because we've got to go on tour. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah, so we go to Mexico in, in January where we kick off with the symphonic orchestra there and big choir and everything like okay. that. And after that, we'll probably do Europe, China and festivals. So that's it. So we haven't been planning for the next album yet but it will come well, well one question about the live performances then because the the type of music that you make uh, yeah. is very elaborate and the, the, i mean there's choirs there's all kinds of things yeah. um what are the challenges kind of trying to create this a similar sound on stage and then also yeah. if, if, if you think about uh, a couple of members of the band uh, don't go on tour with you so how do you figure out what to do live is, is that a difficult uh, thing yeah a little because obviously we can't go with a big orchestra on, on tour right. we wouldn't have homes after you know <laughs> but but um but luckily, we have a bass player and a guitar player who can sing as well. Mm. So we have them to fill up a lot of holes, you know. So, But it is a different thing when we do live. The live is more rock than opera, really, in my opinion. Because that's what's happening when you don't have the big orchestra, you know. But that makes it then special, as you mentioned, when you go to Mexico and there is an or orchestra you're yeah, playing. Yeah, that, that makes it gonna be great fun it's my first time i do this with a with a band and orchestra so i've been i've been singing with orchestras before but normal music so to speak <laughs> sure it's the first time i infused a, a rock band with a, with a symphony orchestra so it's gonna be exciting sounds great um may i thank you so much for taking the time to talk with me oh thank you for having me a pleasure